Welcome to Sign Seal Delivered Summer on Girls Gone Hallmark, a Hallmark review podcast. I'm Megan, and I'm a longtime Hallmark movie fan. I'm Wendy. I'm a former Hallmark hater. Today, we are discussing the Sign Seal Deliver pilot to kick off a series of signed, sealed, delivered reviews in honor of the series returning with two brand new movies this year. Hang out with us when the podcast is over. We're on Instagram. We are Girls Gone Hallmark. That's our Hallmark specific podcast. And we are also Megan and Wendy, all things Megan and Wendy. We'd like to invite you to join our Girls Gone Hallmark Facebook group. Just a good time. Just chatting about Hallmark. And our Patreon is not on pause for the summer. You can find us, patreon.com slash Megan and Wendy, dropping new episodes every week. You can get a week completely free over there to check it out, see if you're interested and what we got going on over there. You can catch up on back episodes for free, patreon.com slash Megan and Wendy. Let's kick it off with a synopsis. Okay, a two-hour backdoor pilot of the TV series with the same name that focuses on four postal workers who take it upon themselves to track down intended recipients of undelivered mail. Now, if I can just pause there for a second. It is incredibly difficult to find this pilot, I feel like, because they like tuck it into the... The series, the series uh-huh. with the episodes. And I wonder, like, obviously, I'm not familiar with this series at all. Have you ever seen any of it? No. How does it go from, like, a movie to a series to back to movies again? Like, what happened there? Okay, well, let's talk about the first part of your question. Because it was incredibly fortuitous that I saw a tweet from Hallmark director Heather Hawthorne Doyle. And she posted, yesterday was day one of prep for a TV movie that's also a backdoor pilot, meaning, this is her tweet, if network likes the movie, they'll greenlight season one of a TV series. And then she does a thread about how, like, prepping for the movie, which, super interesting stuff. You can find her. She's HHDTV on Twitter or X. I wonder if she's about, like, pre-production and all of that. I wonder if she's referring to a Hallmark She doesn't say specifically. Mm, Interesting. So then I saw that Science Seal delivered. This was considered a backdoor pilot. So this movie was written in order to get the network to greenlight a full series. And I actually think it's perfect, right? Having seen this movie and then at this point I've watched a couple of episodes of the series. It makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. Like, we could kind of this longer drawn-out story and then just – mini episodes i don't know how at the end of that they decide we're not going to make any more of those we're just going to make the movies i don't know the answer to that if you do know yeah how do they go back and forth yeah hopefully somebody listening here who is like a big fan of the series can email us megan and wendy at gmail.com and give us the tea how did this all play out yeah let's let's hear it let's move on okay Scott Smith directed. Scott's has, Scott has 37 directing credits and would go on to direct five episodes of the TV series. Scott's additional Hallmark credits include Frozen in Love, Autumn in the Vineyard, several episodes of Cedar Cove, as well as The Story of Us. What's The Story of Us? It is a 2019 movie starring... It sounds familiar. Starring Maggie Lawson and Sam Page. Oh, Sam Page. Sam Paula is going to come for you. Sam Page. Richard on The Bold Type. Yes. Pa- why is and Marco Grazzini, by the way? Why? Zibby Allen. Why is Paula going to be mad at me? Paula loves Sam Page. And she, she's going to be mad that she, I don't know this movie. She has been asking for us to do some Sam Page reviews. Well, I'm sorry, but I think the one of us that chooses the fan favorite movies <laughs> might be the one that she's mad at because I don't pick the lineup. Me? <laughs> I love Sam Page. He's nice to look at. We are not Wait a minute. fan favorite movie reviews. Wait a minute. Coming. Maybe it's not Sam Page. Is it the other guy that kind of looks like Sam Page? The guy that was on Parenthood? I don't think it is. I think I think it's Sam Page. 
Moving on. Eric Mabius plays Oliver O'Toole. Eric has 71 acting credits. Outside of Hallmark, his biggest role was as Daniel Mead on Ugly Betty. In addition to many, many signed, sealed, delivered appearances, he was in It's Beginning to Look a Lot Like Christmas and had a very small role in both Haul Out the Holly movies. Kristen Booth plays Shane McInerney. I freaking love that name for a woman, Shane. Anyway, yeah. Kristen has 100 acting credits. In addition to all of the Science Seal delivered juggernaut, she appeared in this year's Shifting Gears. She also had a recurring role in season five of Working Moms. I don't know if I watched season five of Working Moms. I'm not sure if I did either, but she was in every single episode. Okay. Yan K. Crystal Lowe plays Rita Hay. She has 94 acting credits and has appeared in Christmas at Dollywood, Flip That Romance, Marry Me at Christmas, and Hearts of Christmas on Hallmark outside of her multiple sign seal delivered appearances. She is an emerging director, having directed her first full-length feature this year, Shifting Gears. I wonder if that's why Kristen Booth got the supporting actress. Perhaps. Jeff Gustafson plays Norman Dorman. He also has 94 acting credits, most recently appearing in Gilded Newport Mysteries, Murder at the Breakers for Hallmark. I would invite everyone to take a look at the profile photo on his IMDb because hello, wowie zowie. He also has an appearance in the Hulu series Under the Bridge and appeared as the dwarf Stealthy on Once Upon a Time. I'm watching Under the Bridge right now. I know you are. I'm trying to remember who he is on that show. Norman Dorman? <laughs> this is the first time I've heard his last name. Really? Norman Dorman. And I've watched multiple episodes. And it fits. Lacey Maley plays Kelly. We recently saw and loved Lacey in Betty's Bad Luck in Love. She also had a long running role as one of the sisters on Chesapeake Shores amongst her 30 acting credits. Benjamin Hollingsworth plays Charlie. Benjamin has 44 acting credits, including his long-running role on Virgin River. He was in the 2023 Countdown to Christmas hit, The Santa Summit, as well as the recent release, An Easter Bloom. Martha Williamson, hey that was my maiden name, is credited, no relation, is credited <laughs> as the writer for every single signed, sealed, delivered production. She has... 25 writing credits prior to getting to work on Sign Seal Delivered. She wrote on the 1989 series Living Dolls, which I think I might have watched. I was in high school. As well as Promised Land and Touched by an Angel. Living Dolls stars Leah Remini and Alyssa Milano. Yeah, I'm sure I watched I it. I definitely watched that show. I remember it. It's like all these models live in an apartment together. 100%. That was right up my alley. Brandy Harkinen co-wrote the pilot of Science Seal Delivered, as well as most of the additional scripts, with the exception of three out of the, I guess it's 24 total scripts when you add in the movies. She has 14 total writing credits. Signed, sealed, delivered is filmed in and around Vancouver, British Columbia. And now, my friend, it is time for a first impression. I'm going to read a text I sent to Megan midway through watching this movie. <laughs> It is. It says, quote, am I crazy for enjoying this sign still delivered movie? Question mark. My first impression is, uh oh, looks like I'm a postable. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The reason I'm so surprised is because there was somebody who messaged us who said, don't re review this series. It's not that good. This is after we've announced it. Yeah. Too late. So I was like, oh, man, what am I getting myself into? You know, early on, I think we had discussed Science Seal Delivered maybe a year ago because we had, I don't know, put out a call for like, what should we watch? Mm -hmm. And we got some DMs when people were saying Science Seal Delivered. And they're like, it's boring. It's not great. Y'all, I have, I, I'm in. I was like, this is one of the better movies i've seen 1000 percent. and for for a movie to like grab me and like because i love a spoiler i love the four of them so much mm -hmm. shane oliver norman dorman and rita i i'm so invested in them in one movie mm -hmm. i'm i'm excited for what's ahead this summer? All these notes. Yeah. I had so many thoughts. Let's okay. Let's talk what we liked. 
Well, I absolutely love Oliver and Shane. Mm-hmm. And for me, there's something about their dynamic that is giving like great working partners. Now, I have a feeling there's going to be like romance down the road. But in terms of like working partners, I instantly thought of like Boone's Nope, that's not it. <laughs> Bones and Booth on that show, Bones. Uh-huh. And then uh, Mulder and Scully on X-Files. Like the great male-female pairings like who do detective work or police work or whatever. Like I just, I get that like kind of synergy. Mm-hmm. So I love them. I love that they're different, but they challenge each other. They're not, they don't like bicker at each other. Because you know I hate an enemies to lovers like storyline. Yeah. I don't get enemies from them. I just get like... We're different, but then they figure out soon that they each bring something like to the table that they to elevate their yeah. And they work. get past the like you're too techie for me. Mm-hmm. I'm black coffee and the written word, mm-hmm. and your fancy latte and your laptop. Yeah, pretty quickly. Yeah, I love Shane and Oliver too. I loved. Shane's backstory. So in this first one, the reason we find out that she's so committed to finding Charlie and Kelly because she says she was used to waiting on someone and she doesn't want that for them. I love the addition of her own lost letter. And that that storyline brings us so much goodness because there's a scene towards the end where Oliver gives Shane a speech why he thinks she's like waiting to open her letter. Mm -hmm. When they're dancing in their little bar and she's ex- he guesses who the card is from and then she explains why it's so meaningful to her. Yeah. And her face just kind of when they're dancing and he says, I'm sorry for you. Mm-hmm. This scene gives me Tom Hanks as Joe Fox saying, don't cry, shop girl. I can't handle how much I loved it. Mm. I'm all in for the Oliver and Jane and I'm here for the... The long game of the will they or won't they? Yeah. Because my husband was upstairs the other night and I walk in and he's like watching Science Hill delivered the Christmas movie. And I was like, oh, did Oliver and Shane bone yet? And he's like, no, <laughs> not yet. Oh my goodness. Also, um, we're going to get the long game from Norman and Rita. Yeah. And I love that line where Shane tells Oliver, she's like, oh, you know, she's totally, totally into him. and he's like that's hilarious because he's terrified of me. yeah Love it. i loved it too there were some deep moments in this movie that i really liked one of them you already mentioned was like shane talking about her dad and etc i loved when oliver explains to shane the story of his wife leaving mm. kind of heartbreaking mm-hmm. she just bounces like what? Because I did notice he was wearing a wedding ring earlier in the movie, and I was like, huh, that's interesting. Like, we haven't heard about his wife. Mm-hmm. Oof. There's Oof. a moment in one of the future episodes where, like, a, the phone in the office rings, and they're all, like, shocked. And they're like, has he been sitting by that phone waiting for his wife to call all this time? Oh, gosh. Like, anyway. Wow. Another really good scene, I thought, and maybe this is the director – But when they're, like, researching the clinical data on Kelly's health issues or whatever and basically, like, discover that she might likely be dead. Mm -hmm. And it was just, like, the whole tone Mm -hmm. of the scene, like, shifts. I really felt it. Mm -hmm. I really felt it. Um, I love that we get Lacey Maley and Ben Hollingsworth as Charlie and Kelly. Now, they weren't who they would come to be to us at this point in mm-hmm. 2019. And I love watching it from this No, Wait, when did this movie come out? 2013. Oh, you said 19. I was like, wait. Oh, I apologize. It's all right. 2013. So watching it knowing, like, the recent experiences we've had with them mm-hmm. just makes me so happy. And we that were new to Science to Deliver. We didn't know the format of the show, but – that it's, you know, we get their story told in flashbacks. I loved the way they did that. It felt like it was as well done as the present day scenes that yeah. wasn't thrown away. And I really was all in on the Charlie and Kelly of it Me all. too. Me too. When they when he they find out that he was arrested, I was like, whoa, that's a twist I didn't see coming. Yes. And I was actually not silly when they go back and they, like, show the runner, like, steal mm-hmm. his wallet. It's so great. 
Yeah, I agree with you. I was invested in the Kelly and Charlie storyline too, but for me, what I like is that the show is truly about the four, Mm -hmm. the four of them. And then like the additional stories, they're just not like terrible side stories. Like I love that it infuses into like, this is the main topic of this episode or movie or whatever, but it's really about the four of them, like figuring it out. And I, like you said, I love that we get it like in all this like flashback and Mm -hmm. yeah, I like it. Um, one of the final things I liked, I love Daphne Zuniga as the bad guy boss. She's 100% giving me sheriff in a Western in this movie. She has lines like, there ain't going to be another meeting and you're going to get that transfer, Missy. And I just picture her like swaggering in, hands on her pistol. <laughs> you did not love Daphne um, Zuniga. I'm going to talk more okay. about Daphne Zuniga and my wish for. Well, let's move on to what we wished for. Well, I still have some light. They're just... Two kind of silly ones. I love Norman and his like random bits of information. And it it's almost like he tells these things because like he's anxious or nervous about like whatever everybody's talking about. And I love that at one point Shane's like, that's awesome. Can you bring in that book tomorrow or something? Like she just like takes care of him. I like that. Um, There were also some really, really good lines in this movie. One that made me pause. I don't even remember what they were talking about, but Oliver says, luck is the religion of the lazy. Mm -hmm. And I was like, damn, that's a good line. I need to put that on a screensaver or something. (laughs) I, I just like it. I just liked it. Okay, let's move on to what we wish for. Justice for Daphne Zuniga. Oh, no. Her role was so random. This is Joe Reynolds from Melrose Place. She did like a hundred episodes of Melrose Place. She also... One Tree Hill. She did a lot of episodes on One Tree Hill. She was in 40 episodes of One Tree Hill. Mm -hmm. Um, She was in Spaceballs, by the way. Mm -hmm. Uh, That's one of my favorite movies ever. (laughs) Models, Inc. Yeah, she was. That's an Aaron Spelling show, right? Yeah, and she plays Joe Reynolds on it. Interesting. She plays herself. Oh, like from her. Melrose Place. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was a spinoff. It was a spinoff from Melrose Place. Interesting. Because I think on Melrose, she was a photographer, like a model photographer or something like that. My point here is, how is Daphne Zuniga not a lead role in a Hallmark movie? Okay, I hear you there. And I think we I was watching the series and in one episode of the series that that role that she plays like that boss. I'm only a few episodes into the series, but it's a rotating cast of characters. And on one episode we get Della Reese. Okay. And my husband walks in and he's like, "That woman is TV royalty." Why is she on this show? Not why is she on this show. He's like, she was great in Harlem Nights. And then she was in... Wasn't she Touched by, Touch by an Angel, which Martha Williamson wrote this? Yes. Ser- yes. So I think maybe that's part of the shtick here, that we get like big deal actors in okay. this role. Okay. But I hear you. Yeah. So, it's kind of nice to... Like when she walks in, I'm like, Daphne Zuniga. Yeah. Like you know her name, yeah. right? I was like, why is she this crotchety old like postal worker? It was just bizarre to me they all i mean three postal bosses in which is where i am they all kind of have their own got it unique personality got it what did you wish for well it's not so much a wish as a help me understand am i to actually believe they employ all of these people in this office that seems to only solve one letter a week Mm. and when Daphne boss comes in and she's like, yeah, we are closing this office because it is no longer viable. I thought, yeah, they have this beautiful, old, not at all industrial looking basement office. And they have three, now four full-time employees that they're employing to do what exactly? That's help me make it. Is, is there such thing as a dead letter office? Yeah. I I have to Google. (laughs) Hmm. Yeah. Where do those letters go? In the trash? Well, according to Wikipedia, it says there is. It's the DLO. The dead letter office opened in 1825. Skilled dead letter detectives. That's from the Smithsonian Magazine to BTW. So yeah, there is an actual, there is a dead letter National Postal Museum. To me, it seems like a 
I want there can't be like regional offices. There has to be like a one well, federal office where all this stuff ends up. I okay. Well, I'm wrong. No, I think maybe you're right. I I don't know. Like, does my local post office have somebody down there in the basement? Like figuring it out no they probably get all goes to one center they probably get sent it just makes more sense in this case for it to be regional because they got to be able to drive to all these places yeah for (laughs) all these mysteries for sure that's very interesting all right is it time for did you see that yeah and i have just one okay did you see the disclaimer at the end of the movie no it was like do not pretend to be somebody from the (gasps) postal service because it is a federal offense I didn't see that. Yeah. And I'm curious if they're like after each like episode or each movie too. Like, yeah, it was just so interesting. I have two. Okay. Early in the movie, Oliver is talking to Shane. She's come to work for them through a mistake in paperwork. And I don't remember what he's saying, but he's like, it's not going to work out for you to leave work here because at some point you're going to leave and I'm going to be forced to say, Shane, come back, Shane. And yeah. I had to look it up. That is from a 1953 American Western called Shane. Shane. Yeah. With John Wayne. Did you know that? Yes. Oh. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> it feels like when he says the line, it sh- apparently it is in the pop culture awareness. I was like, I don't. What are we talking about? You're like, I don't get it. This I had to look it up. I mean, I, I knew it was a movie line, but I had to look it up. Um, also, did Shane hack the private medical records of a clinical trial to find out what happened to Kelly with like three quick little keystrokes? I thought the same thing too. I didn't include it in my like official notes, but the notes I took while I was like, uh, and there are there like HIPAA rules against that? <laughs> like how? They wouldn't know. There's no way. Like there might be like clinical data available to access but you don't know the names of the people who well, are I'm saying in them. she definitely hacked into their system. So, okay. So we think she's a hacker then. She's yes. not just googling. No, no, no. Okay. Or like it's 2013, like we knew enough about the internet. I don't know. I just found it bizarre. She's like, "Here's every member of this private clinical trial and their names and everybody died." Yeah. I thought it was weird too. All right. What did you rate SSD Backdoor Pilot? Four and a half stars. I gave it four. I thought it was great. I thought it was really good. It kept my interest. A lot of these movies I fall asleep in or I'm like. Yeah, I'm very excited for I, the rest of the summer. I hope I'm not disappointed. Mm-hmm. I hope I'm not disappointed. I'm liking the series so far. Oh, are you? Yeah. I've only seen the first two episodes. I'm on three. I mean, okay. Not that much further. All right. Come back for more Science Seal Delivered reviews every week from us. We will be back next with our review of the first half of the series, All Rolled Into One. If you love this podcast, we love your five-star ratings and reviews. You can leave them in the podcast app of your choice, and you might hear your review read on an upcoming episode of the podcast. Thanks for listening. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.